Monster House. Monster House. Now, like last time, let me stress prior, I had a bunch of notes, and then I lost them all. Need to How start... did you lose them? It was last <laughs> night. Yeah, I know. I lost them all. My computer decided to shut down before I could save my file. You need so, to fucking... Do I've got to go back paper. to the caveman ways of just pen and paper. So just I recited off memory what I have. Wall scratchings. <laughs> Carve your notes into the wall. Yeah, that's what I have to do. It's the only way to yeah. rem- remember it all. First off, I got the director wrong. He didn't direct this film, but he was listed as directing this film, and that is not true. Who, who actually, did you say directed the film? Sorry? The guy who did Back to the Future and whatnot. Oh. He didn't. <laughs> he, he, oh. This is, this is Google for it. It just lists a bunch of movies, and maybe he was a producer, and he didn't direct it. It was Gil Kennan that directed this film, he did a banging job, and it was like his first full length feature film kind of thing and as each director kind of comes into a project they have like a wish list of actors that love to play each role and of course no one ever gets their wish list because not everyone they've wanted for every part you know does what they've wished Um, and the producers are like fuck guy no way you're getting all of these people as super unrealistic and so uh, he got everyone on his wish list. Everyone. It is unbelievable, the cast. Um, I mean, absolutely unbelievable if you know who's in it. The only one I've recognized was Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi is never cracker. That was yeah. awesome. Um, so the producers then told him, this will never, ever happen again in your lifetime. That you get your entire wish list, and he never tried because he got it perfect the first time. <laughs> yeah, I, I so, don't know. I've never heard of this director. Maybe, maybe he directed something else really good. I'll check. So yeah, he's not directed many films. Just uh, Monster House, City of Ember, Poltergeist, and oh, Poltergeist, um, the Scream TV series. That's oh, the yeah, Poltergeist. Cool. Twenty seen the Scream TV series. Sure that any good? I was meaning to watch it a few. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's the first two or three seasons are good, and then they've decided to recast and change everything and go under a new direction. But uh, it was really good. I liked it. Okay, that's cool. like for the premise of what Scream is. You know, don't go in expecting a Tarantino fucking style. I mean, I fucking love the Scream. Scream movie. I I say the, I was gonna say the Scream movies, but I only like the first one. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's good, worth a watch. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, but, but back to Monster House. Yeah, back to Monster House. Um, it's John... something <laughs> that was bothering me throughout the film is the babysitter's boyfriend looks like he's like fifty. Yeah, bones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love how it, they got away with so much considering this is a kid's I know. film. Yeah. Like, to get the ratings they did because he commits sexual assault twice before yes. drinking and then littering. <laughs> and then presumably dying. Yeah. It's so, funny because I'm going under the assumption that everyone in the audience has at least seen this film once. Yeah, everybody um, has. Somehow. Yeah, it's revealed at the end of the film that he didn't die. But, unless I missed it, it's never revealed that the cops didn't die. No, no, they're alive too. Yeah, they get out and the black guy's like, so, uh, you know, are we going to talk about what just happened? And and, and the cop's like, no. (laughs) It's Halloween. Let's Where go. the hell were they when the kids were in the basement screaming and wailing? I don't know. But, like... <laughs> uh, that cop, by the way, is Kevin James. And Are you kidding me? That nah. was Paul Blower? Yeah, it was. And he said, let's hell go yeah. in. He's like, it's Halloween. Oh, yeah, the other guy was, um, like... He was, like, Marty from Madagascar. No, nah, no, nah, it wasn't Eddie Murphy. Wasn't uh, it? No, it was oh. Nick Cannon. Um, oh, okay. I don't know who that is. That's <laughs> right. But he, he's perfect for the role. But Kevin James is police officer. He said, 
uh, let's just not talk about what happened. You know, walking out of the ditch where the house was, it said, let's go inspect some candy. And they start laughing. And then Nick Cannon's officer says, ah, we should probably eat some candy too. And instead, of, instead of arguing again, Kevin James's cop is like, yeah, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> Just walk off together. I fucking love this too. They're fantastic. But see, this is what I mean with I the, the will cast. I shoot you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they threatened to shoot a child. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I keep getting distracted, but the cast is unreal. So the the pizza guy playing in the game zone he yeah. um that was Napoleon Dynamite oh uh Bones was played by Jason Lee uh My Name is Earl uh yeah. then we've got Steve Buscemi obviously he's never cracker which is great uh Fred Willard played uh uh D- DJ's dad have you seen Anchorman? Uh, no. What? <laughs> oh, I was... Um, well, Fred Willard's in that film as well, and that's where he's from. Um, Then Maggie Gyllenhaal plays Z. That's Rachel from the Dark Knight films. <laughs> like the second one. I... Yeah. When I was watching it last night, I, I just didn't... I didn't recognize anyone's voice except for um, Steve Buscemi. I know that... Who plays that the bet. so I many. Oh. I can't... That is a star-studded cast. Yeah, Maggie <laughs> Gyllenhaal played Z. Like, they all agreed to just have all the dots in their face. And, yeah, I'll do this. Uh, and then the biggest one that the executives were like, no... You're not gonna get her to do Constance. That's never ever going to happen. Was a woman named Kathleen Turner, and she apparently does like really serious type films. Um, and she just played like the most beautiful animated character ever, and then we're gonna ask her to play the ugliest animated character ever. And surprisingly enough, to everyone's surprise, she said yes, I'll do it. And she even did the mocap for the house, which was part of the role. And how does how they, did a human do the mocap for the house? Like, like think of the queen, right, on all fours in a mocap suit, crushing pet cardboard houses with her hands. That um, who would <laughs> turn that role down? It's who would unreal. not do that? They could not believe they got her to do it. And she I, I'd amazing. be surprised if she said no. Like, to play a house, she did a damn good job. Oh, yeah, no, I was I was going to mention how fucking awesome the house looks. Oh, yeah, I got a whole... Uh, where is it? One thing that this film has is style. It, the whole oh, film. Yeah. So yeah. I mentioned it briefly last time, but not a lot of people are going to watch the last one if they're just interested in this, but they completely animated the whole film and then deliberately took out frames in the film so it looked more like stop motion. And it's just somewhere in between that line where you you couldn't... You know it's animated, but it looks like stop motion. And it's an interesting, like, visual style that I've never seen before this and after this I, this is the only place it's, it's just got style <laughs> like the yeah, leaf at the yeah. start of the film and how it, when it slowly blows yeah. up towards the door and all the colours get muted and whatnot. yeah um but that <laughs> the house design the neighbourhood design everything's just love it nothing wrong with it yeah, the character design is also pretty good because basically everyone is super tall and like thin, except for the fat people. <laughs> yeah, and except Chowder. Like everyone looks really unique and um, epic. Yeah, no, I can't fault the design at all. It's um, it's different, and it's it's yeah. they did something right because watching it as a child, I vividly remembered some of these images and frames that. Oh, yeah. but I haven't seen the film in years. You know, like I the interior of the house and stuff like that. Oh, man. 
I uh, fucking love this film so much. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I can't believe... I think part of what makes this special is because they got the wish list cast. Everyone they want... Like, he could make the film he exactly wanted to make. Yeah. Exactly how you envisioned it. And it just works. So, I... Rewatching it, I found what people's problems were. And that the characters are pretty one-dimensional. And no one really has an arc. Other than Nebercracker, I suppose. But, it, you know, it's very short. Well... And it's... And I've realised it's not the characters and arcs and whatnot. It's more the journey of how the story is told. Yeah, I mean... The the main character, DJ, kind of has an arc. Um, Because at at the start of the film, he's like, nah, trick-or-treating? What the fuck is that baby shit? Um, But then at the end, he was like, wow, that was a traumatic experience and I could have died my friends could have died and a lot of people could have fucking died <laughs> so let's just go trick or treating why not go and I think that's a pretty <laughs> good outlook to have on life <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say like chowder it's guy yeah guy that was pretty traumatic guy <laughs> um, but I think I think that's what a lot of people's problems were and I definitely picked up on those issues but yeah, no. And, but actually, think for a moment how traumatizing that would be. <laughs> oh fuck. Um. Yeah, you're going talking to a therapist, and she'd never believe you. For the rest yeah, of her life. Yeah, I love. I love at the end of the film in the house of walking through the streets. Not one person saw it or heard it. <laughs> yeah, no. No one seems to fucking know what happened or heard it. Like I know, like towards. You know, the first, like, three quarters of the film, it doesn't move around adults, but it obviously doesn't care about that at the end of the film. Nah. Unless it is just going to stop moving if somebody looks at it. Oh, Constance just does not give a shit anymore. <laughs> like, knows yeah. it's, it's the final night. I've had enough of these kids specifically. Yeah. <laughs> um. But, yeah, I think that's what a lot of people's problems were, was that Bones is very one-dimensional you know, the babysitter is, everyone's kind of their stereotype, and that they, not a lot of people have a, learn something new, or have arcs, and I don't mind, and I found that, in rewatching it, it went so quickly, I forgot how short this film was, it felt like an hour and 15 minutes, and so, maybe the budget wasn't there for it, but, I reckon what would have yeah. fixed it was actually padding it out with some more character development. Um, I was laughing my ass off when they were both trying to hit on. Um, uh, oh my god, I can't remember the Jenny. The, yeah, Jenny. And they were both trying to hit on Jenny oh, yeah, straight no. away. Oh fuck! I uh, no, my favorite one was I hate the government. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so many good ones. I love Chowder, just in general. It's time for it. Yeah. In your face, disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but the uh, the guy who played DJ, he um, had a very stellar career. He went on to uh, do Hannah Montana after this for a very long time. And then he made it on to another show similar to it. And then he got uh, a DUI charge. <laughs> oh, good on him. <laughs> he made it. He's made it. Yeah, he made it. <laughs> he left Hannah Montana to star in Disney XD's Pair of Kings, but after being charged with a DUI, he was written off the show. Musso appeared on three episodes of the final season of Hannah Montana and voice characters on Phineas and Ferb and Disney's Milo Murphy's Law. Uh, he also released an album in 2009. What? You can't just drop that as the last bit. What? <laughs> he released an album? Did he just drop off the face of the earth in 2009? Is that the last thing that he did? I think so. Whoa, I see him stage performing. Dude, he looks like 
uh, Gerard Wade from My Chemical Romance. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> well, that's what happened to Mitchell. We mentioned it earlier, how everyone lives at the end. That's the one thing I don't really like, is that... Oh, everyone lives. Nobody died. There was yeah, no... The way it reveals that Bones lived makes it look like he's, like, a villain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Which is why I remembered that one. I did always remember that he lived. Yeah, well, some um, credits play just before the cops... What happens? It's not the end. Oh, wait. Is the, is the cops after the credits? It's only after, like, four credits on screen, and then... Yeah, no, I, I, credits came up, I stopped watching instantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think it takes away from the urgency, and especially rewatches, knowing that uh, the the cops aren't dead. Everyone's yeah. fine, Bones is fine. And it I is... think it's deliberately kind of snuck in just at the end, so they could get a PG rating or whatever. Yeah. Um... That's what I would think. And that was their way of trying to to get their PG rating without going too far. Um, I wish they no, had... No, when looked. they went in the house, should be covered in blood. Oh, my <laughs> God. It could have been a, a, like, a very fucked up film. Yeah. Just people's head on spikes of wood and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, I'm taking um, it too far. <laughs> Yeah, what I want to know is why Nevercracker waited so long to blow the house up, because, like, he was living there for a long time, and he already had the dynamite. I think it's... I think it's because he said if he killed Constance, he'd have no one left, and was waiting until he was, you know, ready to pass on. Like, so Constance had lived yeah. her life too, and she was as old as he is. It's in some way. And that eventually he'd, he was planning on yeah. destroying her one day because he already had the explosives in that's, the house. That's so long. He's like, what, in his late 20s? <laughs> he's I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, of course. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's a running joke I have with some of my other friends. If I don't know how old they are, I just say they were in their mid to late 20s. <laughs> no matter um, what. I think you missed out because in seeing the credits, I saw a couple big names and went, what? So, guess who was an executive producer on this film? Me. Yes. I was. And Steven Spielberg. Huh! Yeah! <laughs> So, speaking of Jaws, I think that's kind of how he tied into this one. And then, huh. the film was written by Dan Harmon, who did Rick and Morty for four yes. seasons. Hmm. Um, and I, th- yeah, he wrote it, blew me away, I didn't expect that. But there's all these yeah. big names attached to this film. Like, a kid's animated film about a monster house, somehow everyone was on board for. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Yeah. And I forgot just how beautiful this film was, like, to the eye to look at, and how you spend so little time with, uh, you know, characters like Nebercracker and stuff, but how meaningful his, like, last dance is with Constance still, when she's in the yeah. smoke and whatnot. It's a beautiful film. <laughs> you know, I really fucking like the movie. Yeah. And then, like, it's really, like, creepy when it needs to be oh yeah yeah it can be terrifying without saying too much I love the the monster house's design obviously like it's when it's teeth come out oh yeah no, it's super creative I think it looks dumber when it falls apart and then rebuilds itself as a big spiky ball oh it's like a Dark Souls boss that thing it just keeps coming yeah. back there's levels to it <laughs> oh, yeah I, I wasn't a big fan of the design where just the door is teeth. I love it when the whole veranda is turned into teeth. Oh, yeah. Like when Chatter, don't look back. <laughs> it happens for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was absolutely awesome. Yeah, everything, the way the house is designed, and, you know. Oh, so what's a girl house? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, kind of funny because he's right. Yeah. 
Just not for the right reason. Um, and Wait, this was... But that begs the question. Where is the house for Jonah? We don't ask these questions. <laughs> See, that's not our job. That's Rule 34's job. That's true. Oh, now <laughs> you picked my interest. No, don't, don't. <laughs> It's not our job. We're not here to report on that. Please don't. <laughs> I know you already are. Fuck. I really don't want to see this. I really don't. Uh, it's all right. I won't send it to you. Uh, if you want, I can send it to you so you can put it up on the... <laughs> You're better off up. sending it to me than describing it over the podcast. <laughs> That's the sad part. Like, yeah, I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, no. This is horrible. Okay, alright. It's not our job. We don't have to I suppose to do it this. makes sense that it would be there. Yeah, okay, that was very underwhelming. And, um... We'll leave it at that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they, did, they did a bad job. But I yeah, suppose it's, a yeah, it's only one picture of it. It's not very well drawn. All in all, I'm going to say that this experience has been disappointing. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't draw stuff like that. Why would you do that? Um. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. So this was also the first animated film to be made using Sony's like new animation rendering software at the time. Um. It walked so the Emoji Movie could run. <laughs> That should be a quote on the back of the DVD. Oh, fuck. It walked so the Emoji Movie could run. It paved Uh, the way for Sony Pictures Animation. Please tell me you haven't watched that film. The Emoji Movie? Fuck yeah, of course I have. Oh, I haven't. I don't ever want to see it. Only if we're blind drunk. (laughs) Um, So... Uh, there's another... I've got a bunch of uh, interesting trivia for you. Ooh. I love interesting trivia. Yeah. Inter- it interesting. interesting trivia sound effect. Ooh. Um, awesome. Add so, that to the soundboard. Yeah. So Chowder's line, uh, DJ, you piss in bottles, had to be redubbed to you pee in bottles to help maintain a PG rating. But you can still see Chowder's lips lips speak the original line. <laughs> and then uh, What Why <laughs> did they need to pee in bottles? <laughs> the house has a bathroom and they are very clearly already taking turns. Yeah. Uh yeah, I got a whole list of trivia here. Awesome. So as of twenty eighteen, this is the only motion capture film to feature an entirely original story and not be based off an existing source material. That's a long ass time. I That's crazy. Yeah. Um, that is quite a while. <laughs> it, it really has put the, um, the saying that originality in Hollywood is dead is, it's true. <laughs> Everything's yeah. a sequel or a reboot. Um, John Hedder, who played Skull, tripped over wiring and broke his ankle on the first day on set. Good on him. <laughs> uh, Monster House takes place in 1983. Not I did sure. think it, it looked like it took place in the 80s or something. Yeah, well, especially with the cars and whatnot. Mm. Uh, wait. Whoa. Nah, no way. For the German version of the film... Bones, Skull, and Chowder have been renamed to Punk, Freak, and Ketchup. (laughs) What? No way! No way! Ketchup is what Chowder is called in the German version of the film. I thought you were just about to tell me they were removed. (laughs) No! Uh, the tricycle scene at the beginning of the movie was supposed to be a homage to Stanley Kubrick's rendition of Stephen King's The Shining. Uh, that makes sense. 
yeah, I didn't really pick it out as, oh, The Shining, guys, look, um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, if it had the, you know, the iconic camera angle for longer, because there is a part where it, like, goes behind her, but that's only while the camera's panning around, but if it yeah. had, like, that iconic camera angle, then I'd easily pick that up as a Shining reference, but it's like, oh, I guess if you think about it, kid rides tricycle and sees something horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, the film used 3D motion capture techniques to digitally record the physical performances of the actors before, in quotes, skinning them with their animated forms. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> In the original screenplay, DJ and Chowder are harassed by two bullies named Ryan and Cameron, who get eaten after DJ purposefully lures them into the house's bait. The two that's char- pretty that's, dark. Th- uh, yeah, holy this shit. Would, this would be at the point in the movie where they still think the house is killing. Yeah. No, he purposefully lures them to the house as bait. That's what it says. That's... R- that's really epic. Uh, it then goes on to say, the two characters were removed from the screenplay because the studio thought their death was far too dark and that the bullies combined with DJ's cruel babysitter boyfriend and Nebercracker all made the film seem much more cruel. <laughs> I mean, uh, Nebercra- it's revealed at the end that Nebercracker wasn't ever really a dick because he, lo- he loves kids. He <laughs> I just thought of the opening scene where he's just, like... Pulls the bike apart. He never hurts kids. It's fun. Um, well, you know, he was only doing it because he had to scare them away from being near the house. Because the house is a dick. Yeah. So, there's homages to various Stephen King stories abound. Uh, the idea of a house that comes alive and eats people can be found in the third installment of King's Dark Tower series, The Wastelands. Uh, and while the house's basement, wait, and while in the house's basement, Chowder shines the flashlight on a mechanical monkey, such like the one found in King's short story, The Monkey, <laughs> collected in Skeleton Crew, or it's a reference ahead of its time to Toy Story 3. That fucking monkey! That monkey was terrifying. Can I just Those say that? Those monkeys looked so fucked up. The fa- the way their eyes just bulge out. Oh, uh, I, I, I never really thought about them. Reminded them, but the one in Toy Story three is terrifying. I don't care what anybody says. When I first you know, seen that shit. Aren't <laughs> there monkey toys like that in real life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are there monkey toys like that in real life? If I had one, I'd just put a pair of sunglasses on him. And then you won't be able to see his weird eyes. It'll be fine. Oh. Here we go. Uh, there's a backstory involving Skull and Bones being in an amateur heavy metal band when we first meet Z. Uh, she, is... The tape says Skull and Bones on it. Yeah. I picked oh my up God. on the fact that Bones was probably in that band. I didn't, but by the yeah. time Skull's introduced, I'd, I'd forgotten about it. Oh, yeah, it just says it here. She's wearing a top with Skull and Bones written on it. And no, the tape she it. puts in says it. Yeah, yeah. That it was like a concert recorded or something. Yeah, she later puts one of their cassette tapes on called Live and the Smell. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's wearing a top that says Skull and Bones. Oh, man, I that completely slipped by me. Hmm. Uh, you know, I didn't pay attention to the top. Uh, the motto on the police car reads, We wanna help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, something I noticed. The um, the police car's number plate, it's DVT249. That's a series of letters and numbers. Whoa, really? It is. Nah. Nah, you nah, pull them my serious. leg. Rewatch the film. It's oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, dude. I don't believe you. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Slapping some fucking trivia on. 
Hell yeah. Um, during the vacuum scene where the boys dress it up to look like a monster, it's dressed just like a kid who walks into the Halloween party in Donnie Darko, same mask and Letterman's jacket. That's cool. I was actually meaning to watch Donnie Darko a couple of weeks ago. Yeah? Um, but it's, it's not on, um, Netflix or anything. Yeah. Uh. <sighs> so, although only mentioned in dialogue once, signs, license plates, and the screenplay say that the film takes place in the suburbs of Mayville, Wisconsin. Just putting that out there. Uh, this is the first Columbia's animated theatrical film to be rated PG by the MPAA. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the second film to be real re released in Real D's digital 3D format. Uh, okay. Uh, I did notice that when I downloaded it, it gave an option for 3D. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I definitely considered it. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I actually have some of those red and blue 3D glasses. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they're not prescription like my other glasses. Whoa. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I've seen another fact. This is Jason Lee's second animated film after The Incredibles. Where was Jason Lee in The Incredibles? Jason Lee was Bones, right? No, he was Skull. Oh, Skull. No. Wait, yes, no, he was Bones, sorry. So, this was the first theatrically released animated film for Kevin James. Later, he'd go on to voice Otis, the cow, in Barnyard. What? That was Kevin James? Fuck, man. See, that's another one that's just drawn together. My brain's exploded. Yeah. Oh my god. The cow in Barnyard is Kevin James? I... But... What? I don't think I've thought about that film once since I watched it in like 2008. <laughs> nah, you remember that meme? He was a boy, she was a girl. <laughs> What oh, else I fucking to say? <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid meme. Um, fucking hell yeah! Columbia Pictures. This was apparently their only computer animated film to not be from Sony Animation until Sausage Party was released ten years later. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's quite the dip. <laughs> uh, it was the 11th computer animated film to be rated PG after Ants, Dinosaur, Shrek, Ice Age, Shark Tale, The Incredibles, Robots. I want to watch Robots again. Madagascar, <sighs> Over the Hedge. Oh, played the shit out of that video game way too much than I'd like to admit. Hell yeah. You know, the Madagascar video game. Oh my god. The penguins in the boat was the best. Oh, uh, you can just play golf, man. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Doesn't matter. Golf mini game. I played the fuck out of um, that le of the shuffleboarding mini game. <laughs> this is so stupid, this fact. If you notice, Skull grabs a pizza before hitting at the door at out of the diner. It is plausible that he was delivering a pizza, but stopped for video games. D yes! I, that's, that, yeah, that's, that's pretty sense. obvious. <laughs> it's like, well, it's, it is plausible that he is Because he's in uniform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like, what do you mean? Uh, the three super soakers used by the kids went inside the house... Two of them actually don't exist. Only DJ's water gun exists. And it was not invented until 1993. Ahead of my time. <laughs> DJ invented it. <laughs> yeah. He's a very yeah, intelligent Yeah, something kid. I want... Something I thought was, like, when they were spraying at the uvula, I'm like, they didn't bring, like, water bottles or anything to refill those. 
Yeah. Uh, like, what were note. they going to do if it just didn't put out the fire? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I noticed this a fair bit, but I didn't know it was the whole time. That the kids never look both ways or one way when crossing the street through the entire film, not once. Yeah, DJ ends up getting run over. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Um, also, did Nevercracker steal an ambulance? Yeah, I think he did. Like he, he, Cause he just gets out the driver's side. Yeah, I know. You know, it it wouldn't be entirely stupid to assume that because he's he's got to think. Oh, Constance is on her own and whatnot. You know, he's just woken up from his heart attack. I, I'm not home. Yeah. I need to be home and break out of there and steal an ambulance if he has to. Yeah. Because um, it's urgent. Um, yes, it is. Some people don't know that the throat of the house actually leads to the cellar near the basement. Okay. Who the fuck doesn't know that? It shows that. Yeah, I was thinking, what? It uh, literally shows that. Um, These facts are stupid. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, see, it's it's here. To keep the movie a PG rating, the victims that were eaten, bones, the cops and the dog, had to come back to life during the end credits. Yeah, I, I did notice this, um, but obviously I got no notes. Uh, the poster at the circus for Constance's performance calls her the woman as big as a house. I did see I it in the film. I saw that too. Yeah. No, I think that oh, was yeah, really no. cool. That's fucked. They just had her in a cage in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he kidnaps her. <laughs> uh, many people... He pulls the cage up and drives have, away. Uh, I, I noticed this, but... Um, uh... Yeah, many people have questioned how three sticks of dynamite could cause the house to have a catastrophic explosion shown in the film. What many people forget is that Mr. Nebercracker had stockpiled tons of explosives in the house, and those exploded when the dynamite exploded. Mm. Uh, yep. One that, and it was also the fact that it's a, you know, a magic house now. It's like the supernatural, like, back zombie house. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, no, there is. <laughs> so the whole joke about Jenny mentioning the house's uvula and Chowder mishearing it and claiming the house was female was actually deliberately foreshadowing that he was indeed right <laughs> that the house is a woman. Yeah, I noticed this as well uh, with this fact here that um, when DJ has a nightmare about the house with the giant sinister arm reaching for the doorway and whatnot. Uh, yeah, the arm is I visibly fucking, overweight. I was, and I was gonna is... mention um, that scene because it's really awesome. Oh, I love it because you don't know whether it's he's dreaming yet or not until he wakes up. Because all of a sudden, is it him dreaming though? Yeah, but yeah, I noticed yeah. how the arm was visibly <laughs> overweight, and that it was Constance's yeah. arm. You know, because rewatching. Because the thing is, if he is dreaming, why would he know that? <laughs> yeah. I do love, uh, before uh, Nebercracker collapses at the beginning of the film, he's clearly about to call the house her just before. Yeah. What? What? The... It says, the monster house wakes up after Nebercracker breaks his arm and passes out. And uh, cracks appear in the windows to signif- signify that the house is upset. What I actually gathered was that when it's cracking... It, it goes over DJ's neck. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought that was really cool. Ah, uh, yeah, and there's, there's not really too much else that's interesting. Um, well, I have learned a lot. We should look up these yeah. trivia... I've got, I could find these trivia pages more often, man. This is yeah. just making it easier. <laughs> Don't have to take so many notes. You should take notes, though, because it I makes should. us sound more prepared yeah but uh Monster House if you haven't seen it I don't care that we've spoiled it go and watch it um yeah nah because really... even on rewatches you get more out of it and it's one mm. you know you've you've visually got to see it uh and yeah there's there's some things you notice on a second watch like the 
police cars license plate and stuff like that i never picked up yeah on yeah well hey look at me i've watched it plenty of times i've never picked up on it you know so yeah. even i have to go and rewatch it again i something i really like to do is go on imdb go to user reviews and read the one star ones because they're because <laughs> review Can reviews we, yeah. that are one star are never like actual reviews I tell you what, that this is a I segment like we're going to have to start enough. doing. I really, really want... We're going to do this from now on. And we'll start with this one. Um, let's go Monster House. Yeah, no, the one I'm, re- the one I'm reading is of this, like, parent. And the first 15 minutes of the film, like was so scary and unchild friendly that she took her kids apparently her boys protested because they wanted to keep watching monster house but then they went and they watched garfield tale of two kitties and they preferred it (laughs) okay so i think it's a crime so here we go uh first there's only nine reviews that are one star yeah uh this uh Review reads, bad, comma, horrible, comma, terrible, comma, don't bother in capitals, followed by eight exclamation marks. That's it. <laughs> it said, warning, right. spoilers. <laughs> There's no spoilers in the review. All right, hang on. No, if you, um, oh my God. Yeah, if you click on it, it opens up. I see. I don't have to read reviews. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I honestly can't believe what passes for entertainment now. Death. In, 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 in brackets. And making fun of death. Violence. Sexual innuendo. Adults threatening children. Crudeness. Alcohol abuse by minors. <laughs> what? What is it? Uh, <laughs> drug theft. There's that one part where Chowder <laughs> asks for a beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's drug theft. When is there drug theft? I don't know. When he steals <laughs> the cold medicine. Dysfunctional parents. Babysitter I, I from gonna... hell. <laughs> I was going to mention that I love how the parents are going to, like, a dentistry convention. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love. I actually, real quick, before I forget, this is one of those things that I'm editing. I completely forgot to talk about. Uh, when DJ's on the phone with Chatter, he asks where his parents are, and his dad's working, and his mum is at the cinema with her personal trainer. That is the real story. <laughs> Chatter's mum's having an affair. <laughs> That's in what the do film. you mean? That's watching movies. Oh, oh uh, yeah, obviously. Um, I love this review so far. So you got the babysitter from hell, stereotypical jokes about African Americans, police, and fat people, and kids sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night. Yup, sure sounds like a kids movie to me. Not in capitals. Add to that. This is so hyperbolic. I love it. I'm reading it too. (laughs) Add, Add to that. The dark and scary elements, a dead woman possessing and turning into a house and keeping her loving husband a prisoner inside for over 20 years and also terrorizing an entire neighborhood. How sweet for kids. Parents. Listen, like parents in capitals. Is this really what you want your kids to be watching? Is this what you want to teach them about life? You know? yeah, I want to teach them <laughs> to avoid <laughs> scary monsters. This movie is too scary for young kids, and I'm afraid that teens today may be living some of this movie scenario. So, why rub it in their faces? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this... I wish. <laughs> I, this, this movie's breaking me like this review okay (laughs) as for an adult audience you won't find it scary or amusing just boring contrived and predictable 
and the characters are just wrong. Clueless parents, ignorant police, stupid and annoying friends, nasty and manipulative babysitters, and beer drinking slash womanizing boyfriends. What great material for kids. Does this really sound like a children's movie to anyone? Question mark. Even the computer animation and good voice work aren't enough to redeem this terrible flick. Save your money, save your time, and save your children's minds. Go rent Ice Age, Monsters Inc., The Incredibles, Shrek, A Bug's Life, any, in capitals, any of them are way better than this horrid film. Spielberg and Zemeckis, shame on both of you for making such a disaster and then billing it as a children's slash family movie. Fuck, I wonder what she thinks of Jaws then. <laughs> this is Monster House! <laughs> oh my god! So Zemeckis must have some kind of connection to the film. I think he would have would have been a producer. He was a producer. That sounds about right. Yeah, uh, I just checked. Whew, okay. That's one review of nine. I don't know if I can keep doing this. <laughs> Alright, the next one. The first five minutes convinced me to leave. That was the one I read. Uh, here, you want to read this That's one? Like, no, nah, you, you can read it. Um, Alright, uh, off topic. I'll go through two more reviews and then uh, I, there's something else I wanted to talk about with you. Alright, awesome. Uh, this movie is being billed as a fun, funny and family movie. I took my five, six, and seven-year-olds to see it. Two boys, one girl, in brackets, because that needs, that's important. In the first five minutes, we saw a curmud- curmudgeon. curmudgeon yell and scare a little girl and tear her tricycle apart. Then we see the neighbor boy lifted by his lapels. What? Lapel. It's like part of his collar. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love how she calls like him this. that because she doesn't know he's the main character because she like watched barely any of it. Yeah, she watched five minutes, so she has the right to critique the whole film. Uh, yeah. uh, into the air and screamed at just before said, "These are big words." <laughs> just before Nebucracker has a heart attack and dies, then we see the boy's babysitter show up. Who is a crude, rude, drinking, and acid rock goth type babe? Whoa! Hell yeah! I thought, I thought the first five minutes convinced you to leave. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't shut for a while. Then we see the shadow of the monster house flowing in quotes through the boy's window, emit a large clawed hand that then grab him. <laughs> My little girl was jumping and crying, although the boys protested. <laughs> we all left. Fortunately, the theatre manager said he had received a lot of complaints and allowed us to see Garfield Tale of Two Kitties instead. <laughs> okay, next paragraph. Make no mistake, the movie is very good for teenagers. Oh. How would you know that? <laughs> oh, it's very good for teenagers, so it shouldn't be one star. Uh, yeah. It uses all the standard scare techniques of a slasher movie, so it's much too intense for younger viewers. That is, the music, sound, and okay. color are all well done to set the mood of fear and surprise. After 90 minties, because <laughs> she, <laughs> she cuts for minutes, of Garfield, my little girl was much happier. But I'm still sorry. For having to put here through... Wait, I'm still sorry for having to put here... Her. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be her, but put here... <laughs> to put here through all of I that. Noticed... Towards the end of this review, there's a lot of spelling <laughs> errors. <laughs> this has been the best bit. This movie should be rated PG-13 to warn parents that little kids should stay away. It is pg <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's I 13. I think in America, PG and PG-13 are two different ratings. Baby. I'm rating this as awful for hopes a parent will see the review and be forewarned for older kids. 
This is probably a very good movie for its type. <laughs> yeah, it is very good. It is a very good movie. <laughs> I don't think any of the others are going to be super entertaining. Uh, there's a bunch. I'm just trying to pick one. Alright, alright, I got one. Alright. Here it is, the last one. I have read a lot of the reviews on this movie. And contrary to what it seems, most other people thought we hated it. We almost walked out of the theater. Seven of us, of all ages, went to see this movie together. And the highest rating it got from our group was an okay from my nine-year-old son. For the younger what kids, that little bitch, no. <laughs> for the younger kids, it was terrifying, and we had to leave the theater. From the previews, it looked like something we'd really like, and we made a point on vacation to see it at a theater in 3D. The animation was well done, but I didn't like most of the characters, and it was more like an episode of Supernatural than a kids' movie. <laughs> the plot seems like a rehash of the popular horror genre TV shows. Examples? None? The poor attempts at humour are really sad. A couple of short giggles, a couple of time, is all we heard in our theatre. See, these people are really illiterate. I'm, str- I'm struggling. Yeah. I mean, I can't read big words. That's probably connected fuck. to why they don't like Monster House. Yeah. Uh, the beer drinking and sexual suggestions do not belong in a kid's movie. Did this per- Has this person watched kid's movies from, like, more than ten years ago? I don't think they existed more than 10 years ago. should watch Shrek. <laughs> I hated the way the... I hated the way that all parents were portrayed as stupid. <laughs> in, this, in that exact sentence, she said so many wrong things and then called it's... them stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she said and I'm quoting I hated the way the old parents were portrayed as stupid <laughs> immoral and uncaring all the threatening and abuse of the kids was disturbing uh, what can I say this is one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time turned out to be nothing like any of the commercials we had seen marketed and it was a horrible way to end a wonderful vacation. There is so much that is disturbing and inappropriate about this movie and it should never, never have been marketed for kids and families or even, or ever even made as far as I'm concerned. I will be telling every parent I know to avoid this one like the plague. Whoa, she fucking some serious words there. Um, yeah. so Monster House is really good. Go and see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. don't listen to those reviews we just read out. Yeah, because they were hyperbolically vi- hyperbolic and vitriolic. Here, let let me give you a, a ten star review. The graphics are incredible for the year of the film. The amazing story. The characters are unforgettable. Ah! Viva España! <laughs> oh, I thought that was your 10-star review. No, no, no. That's what I just I just read. Titled the best movie ever. <laughs> the graphics are incredible for the year of the film. The amazing story. The characters are unforgettable. Ah! Viva España! <laughs> That, that review was made in 2018. Yeah. It's amazing. The best movie ever. I agree. <laughs> what is this one? Never smiled so much in 90 minutes. Made me cry. My dog is better than yours. It's <laughs> probably referring to dog in the movie. Maybe. I... <laughs> I like to imagine they're not, they're not. It's just their own personal statement. Yeah. Uh, I mean, might be true. I don't have a dog, so she wasn't talking to me. Anyways, Monster House is really great. If you've already seen it, give it a rewatch. It's really good. If 
yeah. you haven't before, well, take our glowing recommendation. Yes. But now, I want to yes. know, what is Maneater like? Have you played Maneater? I am working on a video about it. Yes! Oh, it's the best news I've gotten all day. I'm pumped. Literally and figuratively. Like, I'm tense right now. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. My biceps are about to explode out of the skin. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> pumped. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm so ready. Ah, oh, this will be amazing. I can't wait. So, it's been a lot of fun so far. I can't, I won't ask too much, because I don't want to ruin it all, but, uh, yeah, um, how, how's it feel, like, playing it? Is it fun? It, it was, uh, the, the gameplay is pretty fun, you know, swimming around as a shark, eating people. If that wasn't fun, the game would be, yeah, <laughs> you know. So, you've played Jaws Unleashed before, haven't you? Oh man, that that was a long time. I did because the thing is, I hate underwater in video games, especially when it's really deep. And Jaws yeah. Unleashed in like the first level has the really deep part, and I didn't want to swim over it, and so I barely uh, like. Yeah, that's no, all right. I was the same. I didn't like swimming really far out into the ocean and whatnot. I always stayed really close to the coast. <laughs> and that's where all the fucking beaches are anyway. Why would you want to live? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, that game was hard, man. Jesus Christ, that game was hard. I'm going to need to record footage of that. You know, there's a there's a section of the map in Maneater, and it's really fucking deep. Yeah. And I'm going to need to get footage of that. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that's all right. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, next week we're supposed to be taking a look at Jaws 2 returning to the Jaws franchise and uh okay giving the second one a whirl there's a lot to say on that one too um the fear of the shark is what killed it. nah that's, no, that's the f- Jaws 4 <laughs> that's 4 but but I- this one look out for the line where Brody is talking to this like marine biologist and is like, you don't think if a shark died that another one could come and take its place? And she says, sharks don't take things personally, Mr. Brody, and walks off and leaves him like stunned. All right. And then take into account the tagline for Jaws the Revenge. This time it's personal. <laughs> they obviously I didn't watch the second deliberate. film. I don't uh, think no. they did. They didn't watch the previous films <laughs> fear at the shock yeah no I love it I fear always... could kill fucking Brody oh, they did not watch the other films yeah the man who killed two sharks already would die yeah. of fear um so uh yeah I always love to hit imagine the dun 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 as soon as she says it cause he's like just Looking into nothingness after she says yeah. it, like, <laughs> like like he's just read the the title for Jaws four and its tagline, and it's like, wait, you know, you don't think another one could take its place? Sharks don't take things personally, and he's like, wait, but the cover said, uh, it's funny <laughs> as fuck, especially with the context of the fourth one. Um, but I I think Jaws two is good, and hopefully you'll like it. Um, well. They've got John Williams yeah, back for the score. A lot of, a lot of great stuff. Um, and yeah, Jaws two next time, everybody. And uh, we'll leave you on that. Is there anything else you wanted to say before? No, I think that about covers it. Oh, uh, and one more thing. One, one last thing. I was editing the last podcast. I seen what you said. <laughs> Yes, I did. You don't need to ask. <laughs> I left it in. Of course you did. <laughs> so everyone's already seen it, but I saw it and I laughed my ass off. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Because uh, I was reminded of that time we were recording GTA footage, and I was in the vault. I just did the jerk off emo because I knew you were already recording, and you'd only see it later on when you were in the Rockstar editor. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Fuck. All right. Um. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. I'm not sure how long this one is. It's probably another long one, but uh. Uh, good yeah, movies. about an hour. Yeah, good movies deserve to be talked about properly. So, yes. um, yeah, thank you, everybody. And we will see you next week. Jaws 2. Yes, it's Jaws not 2. Personal. I will make sure uh, I watch it. What was the tagline for it? Fuck. I can't remember. This time, it's the second time. This time, it's the second time. Jaws 2. <laughs> see it before you go back in the water again. Yes. <laughs> Jaws 2. <laughs> That's what we remember it for. Yeah. What's the tagline for the third one? 3D. This tag is 3D. <laughs> it's a 3D.